Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, another video for you guys. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel, it helps it out. Let's get down to it. Data breach today is another cybersecurity, information security, IT website that shares news and information related to the industry, world, what, what have you, what's going on. Covers a lot of data breaches, high level security events that's been going on. As you can see here, settlements reach in two large healthcare hack lawsuits. Now, I used to work for a healthcare organization. And I'll tell you, before I started there, I assumed that these healthcare organizations, like, hey, they have all this HIPAA data, EPHI, PHI data, all this healthcare information on their systems and networks. So I assumed that they were highly secure, had everything locked down. Of course, that was not the case. As with any organization, they have vulnerabilities. And if they're not implementing best practices as it relates to information security, then they're probably going to end up getting punched in the mouth and getting breached. Basically, this article is covering like two healthcare organizations. They're pretty, they're pretty big. And what happened was they got breached, ended up getting sued, multiple lawsuits, and they had to pay out of pocket. First one here out of Missouri, BGC Healthcare. They had a, looks like a email phishing incident back in 2020, affecting 288,000 individuals. That's a lot of people. Now, the point here is a lot of these organizations when it comes to email, they do not properly implement email retention, record retention policies. So a lot of users will have tons of emails that have all this confidential information, sensitive information in it. And then what happens is their, their email account end up, ends up getting hacked. And then what the hacker, what the attacker does is they'll get in there and they'll create all kinds of um, email like Outlook rules, what have you, to forward emails to an attacker controlled account, or they'll exfiltrate data a different way to get a hold of that information. And let's go further into this article here. Let's see here. Hospital system estimated the settlement will cost nearly $2.7 million. Now that seems like quite a lot of money here, but I don't know how much these guys are making. That could be a drop in the bucket, but it's still a lot of money in my opinion. Also, not to mention intangible costs, such as damage to reputation. Like who, who would want to go to this hospital after they got breached? Like, hey, my information is not safe with you guys, and you guys aren't doing your due diligence and due care to protect my information. So why should I go to your hospital for care? See, the, the other legal action is an approved $425,000 settlement in a clash class action lawsuit against Indiana-based Methodist hospitals. Another email hacking incident. See, what did I just say? Probably had tons of emails just sitting there waiting to just to get, get exfiltrated by the attackers. Blah, 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 it goes in deeper detail here. Whenever these healthcare organizations get breached, um, OCR comes in, the part of HHS, They'll come in, do their little audit and stuff, and they'll tell, basically give them corrective actions on how to improve their security posture of the health organization, the security enhancements. Let's see here. Maintaining a written information security policy, conducting annual mandatory cybersecurity classes, new hire orientation, periodic training, maintaining a written password policy, password complexity, implementing multi-factor authentication, remote access to email. Now, this stuff here is security best practices every organization should be doing something like this like these guys should have known better especially having an information security policy that's like day one type of thing right here password complexity as well like come on guys these guys probably maybe had an eight character minimum password requirement which is basically useless in today's world with with all these high-tech you know computer systems heck you don't even need a high-tech computer system nowadays you can just go out buy 
buy regular computer off of uh, Amazon or what have you, and you can crack these passwords, these eight, eight character minimum passwords fail to relatively quickly, which is why you need multi-factor authentication. And hopefully the multi-factor authentication is, is a good type of it because there's some out there that are basically useless or not as secure as, not as, secure as the other ones, such as text message or email, phone call, what have you. Those are relatively weak. If you don't know about those, I would recommend you go out and do some Googling, research on those, and figure out why those are not preferred by NIST. Uh, let's see here. Methodist Hospitals breach, of course, breach notification. But as I said before, email accounts contain PHI, including names, addresses, social security numbers, passport numbers, and medical treatment diagnosis information. Wow, what a surprise. Now this stuff here could obviously be used for some kind of fraud, whether that be identity theft or some kind of medical related fraud. Going back to working in healthcare, it's probably one of the worst industries I've worked in. Like I said, a lot of vulnerabilities and a lot of red tape on how to get things done. But these health organizations do pay uh, top dollar when it comes down to hiring good cybersecurity professionals. So that may be an industry you may be looking into getting into, especially if you're good at at regulatory type of activities. You know, you got your GRC out there, governance, risk and compliance. If you're going to get in healthcare, be sure to be knowledgeable about the HIPAA laws and privacy when it comes to securing patient data. These health organizations are also known to have old systems in place because of the high cost of upgrading systems. So they'll have a lot of old operating systems such as you know Windows Server 2003, which has been obsolete and unsupported for numerous amount of years. They may be running Windows 7 on X-ray machines, other type of medical equipment. And for some reason they can't get rid of it. So you will need to know how to properly secure those systems, how to properly lock those down to only authorized users. Litigation trends. There has been also, there has also been an uptick in settlements being reached in many of the class action lawsuits filed in the wake of major health data breaches, says privacy attorney David Holtzman of the consulting firm HIT Privacy LLC. Of course, this was bound to happen, especially when the pandemic began. I remember I was working at the healthcare organization at the time. And I remember we had a huge uptick in phishing emails coming in, people pretending to be from some type of big healthcare organization like World Health Organization. I informed my manager that, hey, we should probably be expecting a lot of fraud or phishing related emails coming in. This was before they started sending out all these phishing emails related to, you know, the, the, uh, huge pandemic related things. I can't say the actual term on here because I don't want my video getting flagged, but you guys know what I'm talking about. This is why you should be out and about looking at this news here, other related news articles, whatever industry you're working in, whatever industry you want to get a position in. Let's say you want to work for a financial organization. There may be an interview question on there asking about what's the latest news you've heard about this industry, you know, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. So you need to be aware of these events going on all these high level data breaches, how these attackers are getting in and then how to properly defend against such attacks, how to respond to these attacks. And that's all I have for you guys. As I said, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to my channel and I'll have a another video for you guys. See you later, have a nice day.